just living in this house, it has attracted so many different artists over the years. I mean, even way before church, there was there was like dancers living here, uh, painters, photographers, all kinds of people that this house just attracts. And it wasn't until like the last, I want to say like year and a half, where I just decided that I'm only going to rent out to musicians because I, you know, I just feel like when you when you have the rooms all rented by people that play music everybody just collaborates and that's kind of how this whole jam thing kind of started it's music and church is in session and anthony you're the reverend you know because he's got that trumpet and he just reps it so hard so when you play the trumpet it's one of the few instruments where you don't have to be in your house to practice you can go out hang with people go on hikes go somewhere be in transit and you can still practice which is great because the trumpet actually fits into a car it's an acoustic instrument it doesn't need an amp it doesn't have to be plugged into anything it's small enough to fit in your car and I think that's why I'm able to practice all day every day throughout the day because um, I don't have to be at my house to do it so it's great Michael Sean was banging on a drum and Emma was singing and I was playing trumpet and we were recording it just uh, by chance on a laptop uh, through GarageBand and uh, Emma said, wow, we should do this every Sunday and I was like, yeah, shit, that'd be great. We should do it next Sunday and uh, we did do it next Sunday and we kept doing it every single Sunday after that. <laughs> I would, I would say if you lived here, it, it, it was like a major part of your life. And I remember I kept thinking like, who are these crazy people living here who actually do this every <laughs> Sunday? Like, that's crazy. But, um... Why, um, why did you think that was a, a crazy thing for people to live here to do that? I'm just curious. Because it seemed like so much work. Like, it seemed like, you know, like... So many people in your house and I was like imagining maybe if you want you know if you're hangover or something just when you're quiet there's no real place to escape from the party and there's so much cleaning up to do the next day and I was just really impressed that there's people willing to you know give up their home basically every Sunday to many people they don't even know maybe you know well, you, I guess if it's your first time, you're probably like, I wonder where this plate. Oh, there it is. Because <laughs> yeah, it's a balcony, and there's a fence, and there's a road. And everybody takes the road, and then they see the balcony, and they hear the music, and they see the people talking. And so they, they first they come up to the gate, and they're like, can I open this? Should I say, hey, I'm... And they just like, fuck it. I open it, and then they come in, and nobody like notices necessarily if they're new. And they just walk right in and then a couple people will say hi to him. They're like, oh, maybe that person owns the place. And then like a couple more people will say hi. They're like, oh, maybe that person. And all of a sudden, everybody said hi and everybody's met the new person. And by the end of the night, you're part of church and you forgot that it was your first time. And you've probably played every instrument that's there if you know how, even a little bit. 
and you've met some people that you never thought would be here, but then again, you never thought you would be here, and uh, then you come back next Sunday. <laughs> So I remember being like super low energy and then getting here and there was like so much energy in the in the house and like all these people and all these like instrumentalists and like a couple vocalists and people had people were just like were jamming like they didn't know like it wasn't like rehearsed um, it wasn't rehearsed songs or structured songs, it was just like, you know, some people would take their turn and I, it like gave me a huge boost of energy, I was like, okay. The music at church tends to be, um, there's a lot of people playing and normally I play with just a few people at a time, so the idea is to make a full sound. When you have a lot of people, the sound is full. So then you're sitting there going like, okay, what can I put in here that's just subtle and tasteful, not trying to drown everyone, not trying to fill the sound, the sound is already full. So, you know, you'd have something that would be like, doo, 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 doo. you just add that little thing and then that would be your contribution. And that's kind of a neat challenge to, to not um, try to fill the sound, but just add these little things to it. Yeah, so I think that one thing that stood out here was a mutual respect for other musicians. And when somebody could tell that there was someone there waiting to uh, hop on the mic or play guitar, uh, they would pass it over, you know, they would do their part, they would contribute what they needed to contribute, and then they would very openly look for who else uh, wanted to join in and so I found that if I was like drinking my water <laughs> near the microphone uh, regularly somebody would pass it to me or would put it down when they were done and that really created a sense of community. I think one thing that's an important marker is that it's not just about going there to be a spectator it's about going to participate and so for me that partially means dancing but for everyone else there it means kind of like having a chance to become part of the music to join it not to to be a co-creator and not just to, to watch it and have that gap that distance between the performer who's on stage and the audience who's watching and you know sometimes you can go to a show and there's some sort of bridge between the two but at church it's, you can always count on like direct interaction you can always join in if you feel so moved. This is definitely a community and it's uh, good to have other people around you who like inspire you to create art. You know, like for me, making music is like kind of important in my life now, but I would never do it before because I was too scared and you guys like pushed me to like let that out, you know, to like express my art to people because everyone has something this year. But yeah, it's just this creative collective of like-minded individuals that get to feed off each other and give energy to each other. I think it's extremely important. Um, we all have our individual lives that we create and live and work, and this is a chance to really bring everyone together in such a free-spirited place that, um, yeah, I would just talk to people and see how they're affected by church, and it's, it's truly amazing. It was just a place for me to um, like cleanse myself, like exert all the energy out in a safe way, like negative energy, and like be clean, feel really clean on Monday. So like that, 
that really helped me a lot. What we called church here on Sunday nights was different from any other parties that I've been to because it was a weekly thing like, you know, church. It was it was like a it was like people would come not just to party or get drunk. I mean, there's certainly people that wanted to do that, but but people came to sort of check in. It was like a home base. You know, I, I've had experiences of, you know, that really intense partying. I've had the experience of the, um, just kind of like, you know, uh, four people in the room that you never would expect would be in the same room at the same time. And, and here you are and you're talking about life and you get such a, um, such, uh, such a great perspective because it just is such a safe place to express yourself and to say what you really think about things. Um, and yeah, I think really from that, that I really have grown a lot from being here. Sure you are. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> you have a very, very nice, very nice camera. Hey, that didn't, that wasn't what we agreed upon. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. That is really funny. Oh it's like old yeah, right? All white hair. How do you even keep up then? Ah, dang it. This is fucking good. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Oh, it's a pearl oil. Oh, yeah. It's a pearl oil. 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 <laughs> I thought you were like in the stars. You're finally home! Oh, oh, oh. Wait, I, I got the same bit. I had this before. There is nothing, there is nothing interesting going on here. Glory! I like fucking glory. Sassy music. Yeah, what did you do all day? Slightly more efficient than exposing glass to the sun. Yeah, yeah, you can actually draw faster than you can fill with this thing, but there you go, bring it in. Can you describe uh, your birthday, like what happened again? Oh man, so my birthday fell on a Sunday this year, June 10th, here at church, and uh, it was pretty much chaos. Uh, it was just super funky, and uh, I, wa I believe Wallace came in here and granted me a bottle of Jack Daniels to start the night off, which is ridiculous because I am Scottish, Irish, and I love whiskey. So uh, on top of that, my boy Joshua was here, from, who's from Paraguay, and uh, he decided to slice, we've done it before, but he decided to slice up two huge watermelons, right? You carve them out, put the guts like into a bowl, right? Leave the juice in there, right? And then he was pouring, I didn't even know what kind of booze it was. It was like, I had to be like gin and like, just, you know, just like, just pouring it in there and then mix the juice in there. You can't taste anything. And when I walk in, they invite me in there, right? After I get done jamming, they say, Kevo, we got something for you. Everyone does happy birthday for me and they make me chug this freaking giant open, you know, water watermelon with like, who knows what, like it's just crazy concoction. And then I believe we proceeded to walk around the room, be like, it's my birthday. You got to drink out of this watermelon and just feeding people <laughs> booze like left and right. And they're all dancing. Everyone's having a good time. A year and a half straight of every Sunday night playing music till midnight and sometimes past midnight. You know, if we'd all had something to drink, it'd be like fucking keep the party going. Um, you know, I, I can see how eventually, you know, we definitely pushed it. We pushed it farther than it needed to be pushed. But Fit is still a really great guy. And as far as the power being turned off, it's just neglect, you know. We had, we had, I won't say any names, but you know, we had someone with it in their name. And, and you know, sometimes shit gets overwhelming and people deal with that differently. And, and instead of dealing with it, it just kind of pushed it off. And then, then the power was off. 
and then we're fucking without power, but we still we still kept it going, man. We had a power cable coming from outside plugged into the neighbors that was running into the house and still had church going, man. We never quit. Um, so as you can imagine, if I've gotten to the point where I can't bear the noise because I need to sleep or because I am sick or for, you know, some reason or I'm like exhausted and I just like really need to, I, I come home to my, to my home and I want some quiet, <laughs> um, then, um, yeah, then I'll give a knock with something harder. You know, firm spots, but I don't want to do that right now because they're playing up there and it's not a problem. But, yeah, I had grabbed one of these. I had three wine bottles at one point. I had grabbed one of these and like done it and I broke it. Um, All over your bed? Yes, and over here. And when I, when I hammered this little spot right here, all this like white powder, and like still, oh my God. And then for like the next three churches afterwards, there would be like, just because like everything vibrates and like my picture frames, they like go sideways. And like, so there was like white powder, like coming down like snow. Church kind of became in the vein of unholiness, you know, like a sexual resource for the people in the house where you've got all these girls around now. And it's like, oh, what do we do with all these girls? You know, and oh, uh, like, let's just take them into our bedrooms, more or less. I think that's what happened. I'm not really sure, but that seems to be like what began to happen. And then it became like this great, you know, place to go and hook up, you know? And I, th I think it even lost a little of its emphasis on music eventually when when you have all these people, these outliers in the group now just going like, oh, maybe I can meet that, you know, cute girl inside the other party at the layover or whatever, you know, and follow through on that. And so it became really like just a, a much bigger it, it added dimension to the whole thing you know where it's a very like complex social dynamic going on all the time and uh, yeah well there was some tension happening at the end of church where um you know the neighbors were becoming more and more vocal about the you know not wanting to be kept up all night or like at least till three in the morning when people usually hang out on the porch, you know, party in the yards and stuff. Yeah, people are getting more and more vocal about like kind of mm, not being happy about church uh, happening every week. <laughs> and so that was kind of weird because, you know, the neighborhood who's here loves it because it's like a fun, you know, cultural, uh, spiritually enriching event and then the less funky people um, on the block they just the, they're what I call funk crushers and they go to bed when they should be getting their groove sway on and so they weren't so happy about us and that turned into a thing where the cops came a few times and tried to well, they didn't really actually do anything. They just, they told us to stop playing within the next hour. And they said that they were called every week, actually. They had only decided to respond once because Oakland has bigger problems. But finally, our landlord um, decided that we shouldn't play anymore because he said we were literally breaking the building like we're knocking it down with our music um, and I don't think that's true I think maybe the dancing was knocking it down but uh, the important thing is that we are still playing music 